I'm very happy to be in Belgrade again, and uh, this is thanks to the organizing committee, and particularly to Marta, who's uh, <coughs> uh, who, who thought about us. And when I say us, I'm referring to to my colleague Mara De Joannon, which is um, here as well. And um, we met Marta, and uh, we started this kind of, I hope, uh, long-lasting collaboration through a European. Um, project, the European network, called Smart Cats. It's a cost action, for those of you that you don't know, Maya and myself would be happy to, to, to talk about uh, later. And uh, this was a um, um, network was, um, which finished uh, last month, actually. Uh, it was uh, on something called smart energy carrier. Smart energy carrier is not only a fuel, it's a carrier of energy, which of course is, is so it's, it's a chemical entity carrying energy. And the, the essence of what we were doing, and we still do of course, is to see how in this changing world, in this energy tradition we're experiencing, we can best use our resources to produce energy. Okay? Now, my, my presentation is something slightly different, but falls along the same lines, okay? How we go into, uh, oh yes, okay. uh, into what I say uh, as a CO2 economy, okay? Uh, to jump into the conclusions of, the, uh, of, of my talk, uh, the question is not not to produce CO2 necessarily. But the question is how we can recycle, reuse, uh, exploit CO2 <laughs> into a more uh, um, efficient and environmentally friendly energy mix. Okay? So sometimes you will see, and uh, you will not see this in this presentation, but sometimes it's necessary to even produce more CO2 in order to be more effective. And uh, if you I can see this, uh, I hope I hope it's visible. It's not probably not very visible. But if you see, this is a, an informative graph. And so this is how many gigatons of CO2 we are producing. Okay. And this is roughly today. Okay. And this is a projection to 2050. And what you see as color coding is. Uh, Processes, okay, all this is, of course, things of it are disputed, etc. Can be, you can have another opinion, but the, the, the big idea, I think, it's uh, fairly, fairly uh, similar. That how can you reduce this projected CO2 uh, uh, loading in 2050 by several measures into an acceptable level, right? And you will see, okay, renewables, of course, there are several, there are several strategies, all of them interacting. So one of them, of course, is going into renewables or nuclear energy, so non-carbon um, generation. You also have something called CO2 capture and sequestration, something that I'm going to talk today. And but the, the big thing here on, on the bluish color code is fuel flexibility, fuel switching, fuel efficiency, etc. etc. So it's not only a question of moving, so going into a, a, a carbon neutral or a carbon negative or a carbon free future doesn't mean that we remove carbon from the system or remove combustion from the system. What we need to do is uh, improve what we have, of, of course, have a share of renewables, and also what we produce have the means to some way utilize it. And how do we utilize it? Okay, so uh, again, a brief introduction. These are things that I think you, most of you know. But so, when we produce CO2, what can we do? Well, one option is just to bury it. Okay, this is, I think, it's a, it's a crude for a solution, but uh, with several problems, because logistics, etc. so I'm not going to talk about this. 
Uh, the other thing is a kind of utilization. Again, you have two parts. One is, as I say here, non-conversion utilization. For example, a very simple example, you can use CO2 in your uh, mineral water, right, to make it carbonized. This is, this is a utilization, a non-convertive utilization of CO2. If you want to convert it, then you need to look at your thermodynamics. Okay? So, we have combustion, which is a, it produces, gives free energy, is a, <coughs> it's a spontaneous okay, process, and then you have your CO2. If you want to, you can do two things with that. You can either turn it into a fuel, but here you have to pay an energy penalty. And also, you need to use some kind, because fuel means hydrocarbon, you need to use some form of hydrogen. You need hydrogen. So you need to produce hydrogen. And this is the energy you need to pay here. On the other hand, you can do something that I refer to a number of myself, of course, as mineralization. So it's a kind of, a, I would say, small scale or poor man's uh, uh, sequestration. So instead of burying it into the ground, you can transform it into a kind of another mineral structure, okay, into something solid that will not disintegrate, so you'll store it permanently. Okay, so. So let's, because I don't have so much time, uh, but uh, let's see what is this mineralization. So, what we do, what people do, and keep in mind that this is a technology that has a very low yet te technology readiness. I mean, it's not applied to the, has not been, it just started being applied in industrial scale. Okay, so there are lots of questions to be answered here. So, what do we do? We react CO2 with either calcium or magnesium or silica. Okay? And we form a, a mineral structure, right? We form a carbon. Simple as that. And the, react, the important thing is that the reaction is exothermic, so it releases heat. So in principle, if this works, and if this works sustainably, there's some question marks here, this <coughs> can lead to negative CO2 emissions, okay? And of course, it does not need, it doesn't, it doesn't require hydrogen. So, okay, this is the, the kind of reactions we use. Now, this is the, the two ways of doing that. One way, as, as implied in this slide, is to use already existing mineral structures. So, put this into rocks. So, again, like mimicking the uh, big sequestration process. But, the most uh, useful way of proceeding is uh, to use waste sources from other industrial processes. Here you should note, I think this is important for, for, for Serbia, that you have, we have two very energy intensive industrial sectors, the steel and the cement industries, that are very difficult. First of all, they produce huge amounts of CO2, and particularly the CO2 industry is going to produce CO2 forever because it's part of its cement building process. So they produce a lot of CO2, and the second thing is that it's very difficult or even impossible to electrify. So we are stuck with steel and cement and you know, just turn your head around and you will see steel and cement, okay? So we are stuck with steel and cement produced through energy intensive, CO2 intensive process. So what we want to do is try to use the waste to remove CO2, okay? So this is what we do. We extract components from this waste of the industries, for example, I say here, steel slag, I mean all this, this waste liquid that comes in the steel making process, contains up to 60% calcium oxide, okay? So we, have, we found our calcium, and then we do a precipitation reaction step, this is where we come in, this is the part of this research work, 
and uh, we react with gaseous CO2 with uh, diluted whatever, mixture here, to produce something. Something is cancel carbonic body. Okay? Now, where is the problem? Okay, the problem is, of course, where, where, where is the penalty? The first penalty, of course, is the extraction of all this. It's there, but we need to extract it. So we need to input energy. The second thing is that it's not simply calcium and CO2. Okay? We need to have some additives, I will show you later. And these additives, again, can be expensive or can be non-sustainable, etc. So there are still things to, to, uh, to worry about. But we already have the first, I'll say here, the slag to PCC is the first mineral carbonation plant. Okay? So that converts still slag. So this one reacts to CO2 and produces calcium carbonate utilizing ammonia. And this is also what we are doing in a slightly different way. Okay, I don't think I have time to go through that, but I, I think I should, we should forget about this, it's kind of future. But I, I would like to use one minute to go through this slide. Okay? So, this is, as it says, the carbon footprint of carbon capture. Okay? People will say, okay, we capture the carbon, but so we are carbon neutral or carbon negative. It's not like that, because as you've seen from the previous slides, capturing the carbon and converting it to something else involves additional steps that most of them have a carbon footprint. <coughs> so, we go into, this is a, from, from the literature, it's not our work, and this is a municipal waste incinerator, okay? We want to, to capture carbon, CO2 from a municipal waste incinerator, and uh, we compare and, and do it something else, utilize. And this line here is uh, business as usual, just let CO2 into the atmosphere. And we compare other technologies to that. So, this, all these four lines here one, two, three, four. Well, this is capture uh, CCS, sequestration, just burn it with carbon. And it turns out that, of course, this is a solution that has a very low carbon footprint because we don't do anything with that. Converted fuel, all this flow is converted to ethanol. There is a possibility that you go lower, but there's also a possibility that you go higher. So this is, you know, you have to be very, very careful when you do this and how you do it. All, it all depends on how you produce hydrogen. But if you go to mineralization, you see here, it has a very good potential. It can go lower, it can even go negative. This means a negative CO2. Okay, we we are net uh, negative. Okay. So this is to show you two things that whatever you do, please compare it with the baseline case. It's always it, and uh, there is a lot of uncertainties in every say, carbon capture utilization technology. Okay, so two more minutes, if I may to go to the details of what we do. This is part of a, a big European project that involves carbon capture and utilization for a big cement plant in Greece. This, this uh, company here is called Titan. Uh, it's the biggest cement producer in, uh, in uh, Greece and the southeast of, of Europe and at least. Not all of it, yes. And uh, <coughs> anyway, so, I won't go to the details, but the idea is that you capture, you use, um, as we had for a presentation before, you use an absorption column to um, and ionic liquids to, uh, uh, to capture CO2. And then you have several parallel streams, and uh, you produce chemicals, etc. And one of these, is, this is our part of the work, of the work we produce nano-sized carbon calcium carbonate particles. Why nano size? I have one graph at the end of the presentation. Okay. Now, uh, technical details probably it's a bit complicated, so I don't think, just to say that this is uh, the methodology in what it's going directly to this here. So uh, this is, again, a novel, a novel technique we are, we are proposing. 
and uh, this is a, a kind of combined capture and conversion methodology. So you have a membrane, it's called a gas liquid membrane, so you have liquid, you have a series of, of, of tubes, to put it that way, and you have liquid, this liquid will include, uh, for example, your uh, calcium or magnesium, whatever rich uh, solution, flows like that, and then you have gas flows like that, and you create, if you're careful, you can create an interface here where liquid and gas do not mix, but you um, have a large contact surface where reaction can take place. Okay? And this reaction is selective. So at the same time, you capture CO2, this is CO2, or this is, say, the flue gases, which have a CO2 concentration of the order, say, 10 percent and here comes my first comment, that the more CO2 you have, the, most effi the more efficient this process is. Okay? And you have a dispersion in the liquid phase, and then you move on. You do this reaction, so we have, this is the liquid phase, ammonia, and a chemical called calcium, calcium chloride, and you produce your calcium carbonate and this, this ammonium chloride, which I think is, is good for the uh, for a soil improvement at the very cheap. Okay. So this can be renewable. Well, everything depends on whether ammonia can be produced renewable. Mm -hmm. Currently, it is not, but it's something that uh, uh, we have done also a lot of work in this. Uh, uh, cost action I was referring before, it's a very active area of research. Okay? So, uh, what it turns out to be is that, okay, this is again an ongoing area of research. We try to see when you do this reaction, what kind of particles you obtain. This is the, uh, the, the PSD, the particle size distribution of the nano calcium carbonate particles and uh, you will see this is a, a this is a thousand nanometer. You see, we can produce a lot, but we want to make it better, etc., etc. And you can also have you can produce different structures, and depending on the structure, uh, you have different applications. And uh, at the end of the day, what do you do? And this is my final slide. You you take this calcium carbonate particles to partially substituted cement. So. What you have is you have a multiplicative effect. You remove CO2 from the atmosphere, okay, and you turn it into a into a, into a mineral, a chemical something, and this something is going back into the process. It's replacing cement, so it's removing twice because cement is produced through a carbon-intensive process. So this is a multiplicative. Okay, now, of course you need, the, why do you need the uh, nanoparticles? Because nanoparticles can improve the, the quality of cement, the quality of concrete. But, of course, as always, you need to be careful because if you go, if you put too much nanoparticles, or if you put too fine nanoparticles, then you have, uh, the quality goes down. So again, it's a very careful matching of sizing and distribution of the sizes of the water. Okay, that will be it. Uh, I don't think I need to go into the conclusions because I've been concluding through my talk. And just to, to, to leave you with a very nice, uh, you see how nice nature can be? This is just a, um, a SEM image of uh, a nanoparticle, this is not of a, of a nano structured calcium carbonate, which is not very useful for engineering purposes because it doesn't have a particular structure, but it's very nice for a, for a gallery. Okay? Thank you, thank you very much. And for this, the professor, if I guess you understand like that. Thank you so much for this uh, really great presentation of this circular economy example the perfect plan that you have the whole uh, circle and we hope that you will uh, come forward for, uh, with the big industrial scale and in all of this interesting research you have and uh, we are really happy because after uh, this session we have the round table also the 
how industry can um, support uh, this uh, climate change, change discussions, and this would be the great introduction for that, definitely, as a great example. And we don't have too much time, but maybe one little question from the audience, uh, just to give the floor. If not, thank you so much for coming yes. through. Oh, there is one. <laughs> Sorry. A very brief one. Since uh, you mentioned at the very beginning that uh, uh, you think about utilization uh, and energy use within the CO2 cycle. Uh, this uh, uh, important that you showed for cement, uh, uh, what, is it, what is the energy balance of, of that uh, uh, process? You mean the mineral in the, the yes, process in the I yes, yes. You use energy, you produce something, what is what's the energy? Well, well, that's a very good question. And I don't have a, a definite answer <coughs> because it's still we're working. What's the but I can tell you what is the major energy required. And this is pressure. Because what we do, this is a we use uh, go back. We just need too much time to use. We have one more presentation. For anyway, okay. So we, we we use this membrane, and the membrane is uh, has a very small pore. So you need pressure to overcome the um, to go through the pore. So depending how much pressure you need, I mean you can operate at a couple of bar. You may, we may need to go to seven bar. If you go to seven bar, it's a different energy penalty. But what pressure you use depends on what kind of nanoparticles you're going to produce. So. So it's still under under investigation, but it can be high, it can be low. Thank you. Thank you.